Hello, I'm Pearl, and um, this is my little, <laughs> it's kind of a chair class about doing a chair class. Uh, so I'm going to be starting to teach Zumba Gold uh, chair class online very soon because Zumba have just given us permission to do that. But I actually used to teach this a long time ago, a few years ago in um, Merton, in Mitcham. So I have done a lot of these classes in the past. <laughs> Uh, so don't worry, and uh, I would say that I've done them all pretty safely, um, but I'm a bit nervous <laughs> about doing it this way because I can't see you, and I can't see uh, how you're sitting or what the chairs are like, and uh, so that scares me a little bit because I want to make sure that everybody who does one of my classes is, is safe um, because I kind of take it a bit too seriously probably. I do take fitness seriously because I, you know, it's so important that it's something that makes you feel better and not worse, okay? And I want it to be fun. I really want it to be fun. I want you to be able to feel that you can safely go crazy and you can safely relax and have fun and be stupid and silly and break out and just kind of have a wiggle and all those kind of things without worrying that you're going to fall off your chair. And I want you to be able to laugh and not worry that you're going to fall off your chair. So uh, this is really kind of like a safety video and a little bit about doing a chair workout. Before I go any further, I just want to remind people that although I'm used to teaching people who have got disabilities or fight in wheelchairs or need a chair for various reasons, I've also <laughs> had some very fit 19, 20 year old Zumba instructors come into my class to check out the Zumba Gold Chair and they've been shocked at how hard a workout it is. Uh, so it's kind of funny because I think the thing is, is when you work your whole body and you work at whatever level you are ready for, you will get a great workout. And it's been really interesting for me to see how many people are kind of offering chair workouts now. And I'm talking about people who used to offer really kind of hardcore workouts. And they're doing chair workouts because so many people now are having to work out from home. And so I say, okay, well, you might not have a lot of space, but you've got a chair, so you can work out on your chair. Particularly things like yoga workouts and stuff like that. And one of the things you find with a chair workout is that if you do it correctly, it's a really good workout for your core and your waist. And actually, one of the things I, I always used to find is you have to be really careful not to overdo it here. Because your, your bottom is sort of stable and you're working your top. You can imagine that sometimes right here gets a little bit too much of a workout. So we just have to be careful and safe and don't worry about seeing it as an experiment. So come and try the class, see how it feels, and then you'll know whether you need to, whether you can go up a little bit next time, or whether actually that was <laughs> maybe a little bit over too, too much, so we need to take it easy. So it's really just about the chair. So what I'm sitting in now, I'll show you in a second properly when I stand up. Um, it's a very simple, basic chair. It's a kitchen chair, I would call it. And I have, I like a little cushion, because it's a wood chair. So you have my nice little dear Christmas, Christmas cushion. If you like, and what can be kind of a good support for your back, is to sometimes roll up a towel. So you need it like a white, a long towel, roll it up so that it's like a bolster. Or you might have other cushions and things that you use. One thing I want to really um, specify and say is that for a lot of people, uh, what I used to always say to people is, has your doctor said that you can exercise? If you can exercise, if your doctor has approved you for exercise, you can do this class. Obviously at the moment, a lot of people are having health challenges that are difficult to address because they're, they're not critical. You know, we know that all, we're all trying to relieve pressure on the health service. So it's so important that we try and stay well, keep everything moving, keep that circulation going, and really work those lungs as well to, to make sure you're in great shape, no matter, no matter what comes your way. So that means that sometimes you might not be able to get the GP's advice or a nurse's advice right now. So please, please, please be safe, be sensible, be wise. Listen to your body, listen to how it feels. If you feel that you're okay to exercise, then do so. If you feel that you might need a rest and a bit of a day off, that's okay. You can still join the class and sit and enjoy the music and enjoy you know, the, the feeling of doing a class. 
I'll tell you something I learned a long time ago when I was doing my Zumba Gold and my Zumba Gold training. And it's something really amazing that I want to share with everybody, which is that there is a neurological benefit even just watching exercise. And when I was teaching people, some of whom had really severe health problems, I would come in sometimes once a month and we would have somebody who uh, wasn't able to do anything, you know, for the first few times. But just by watching the exercise, it was, was having an effect on the brain. It was having an effect on his body and getting his muscles ready to move and ready, ready to go. And so it wasn't that long before this gentleman could actually start to move with us and to cut and to take part and to also emotionally connect with the music and his memories. And that's a really special um, thing that this, this music, it, it makes us feel happy. It also brings up all kinds of memories. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. And so if you are, uh, <laughs> if you're worried, just remember that even just watching this is having a beneficial effect on you. If you are in, um, you know, maybe you have a partner or there's a family and you worry that maybe somebody is watching this and not doing it. Now, I have people come to my classes and one of the most important things is if you're a carer, if you're a carer and you come to my class and so you're sitting next to the person you care for, or you're watching them and you're watching to see how they do, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter if they're on the beat. It doesn't matter if they move their left foot when they should move their right. It doesn't, you know, all those things, let go. This is a space to just do your best. And so, we, you know, I know as a carer, and I am a carer as well, but sometimes it's, you know, you're really spending so much time trying to help the person that you're caring for to do things right, okay? And I've been there and I am there, I'm always there. <laughs> and it's so important that this is a fun session and it's something that you guys can do together. So if you're a carer and somebody you care for, you can both relax and have fun. But in this moment, the only way you need to care for somebody is to make sure that they're safe, you know, in the chair. Make sure that you both have drinks. Look after yourself as well. And so the two of you can just relax and have some fun. It doesn't matter if you get steps wrong. It doesn't matter if you, um, you know, do that or you do that or you do this or you move the arm. It doesn't matter. The point is to enjoy, to relax, to have fun. It's not a, um, <laughs> it's not strictly. <laughs> There's no judges here. There's no, no, no reason for anyone to judge you. So remember, as a carer, this is your time as well. And if the person that you're caring for is just going to sit there and enjoy the music or even grumble about the music, that's okay. If they want to take part, they want to take part. If they don't, they don't. We want to make this a joy and not like <laughs> stressful. We have, we all have enough stress right now. Okay. So we just want like the good stress of, oh, oh I'm trying to do it. Oh, I didn't do it. Oh, don't beat yourself up. You know, I get it wrong all the time all the time and everybody does when we're doing Zumba because we challenge ourselves and we have a good time doing that. Just relax and just remember that as long as you, you know, get a little bit sweaty, get a little bit smiley, you know, that's the point, that's the benefit of the class, okay? So uh, let's just go with these things again. So again, water, make sure you've got your water and it's to hand and safe and it's not something you're going to just like kick over a glass. It's, it's a tricky thing because when we sit down to do a chair class, most people think it's a bit like you come in and, because we used to do this with a lot of other activities and people kind of come in and they say, they kind of just like plonk themselves down. It's like, oh, this is just going to be like everything else. And then they start doing it and suddenly it's like, oh, la, la. and it's like, oh my goodness. Um, you know, the, the, where I put my water, what I thought was safe, I just kicked it over, you know, because I actually got so excited and then that kind of thing. So sometimes a water bottle, even if you're at home, can be quite useful. Because if you, if you put the top on, you're not going like, to spill water everywhere. I know it's just these silly little things that if you came to my class and I was seeing you, I'd be saying, okay, don't do this. And I, because I've seen it happen. Because I've seen it happen so many times. Obviously, this might be the very first time you're doing something like this. So <laughs> don't worry too much. Take it easy. And just 
you know, think about the space and that kind of thing and make sure that you're safe. Okay, so if you've got a very simple chair like this, um, what I would say is, as you can see, you know, I'm quite relaxed in the chair. I'm sitting up quite strong. As I say, it's quite a good how, how workout and I'm trying not to just kind of like slump back in my chair. It's quite easy. The only thing really with this, a chair like this is because you've got this kind of bit here, that sometimes you have to be careful that you don't get too excited and whack it. And also you want to be careful about things like this, like a table out there. See, I've got loads of space this way, but I don't just whack my hand on something like that. Now I put my good shoes on, but they're not good enough because even though this isn't a very high chair, I still can't really, re my feet aren't properly on the floor. So when I do this for real, I'll probably wear my other shoes, which have a slightly thicker heel, because it just makes me feel better if I can feel really secure having my feet on the ground. It's kind of a problem we have in a lot of chair classes. I've often taught classes where people kind of, you know, struggle with the height of the chair and they can't really get their feet properly on there. Don't worry about it too much, but just see if you can wear a slightly thicker heel um, or if you have a lower chair. If you don't, you don't. One thing you can do, and I've seen people do this, you can put a telephone directory, if you still have one, or a, head, or, or a thick book. You can put a big book underneath your feet if you need to, to kind of give you a bit of stability, if you like. And remember, you're not putting a weight on that. It's not weight bearing. You're not going to balance anything on, on books, but just so that you can get that contact if you want that, okay? Because it is difficult when you're up here, you know, and it, and it feels a bit wrong, okay? Also, on this chair, what's good is I can come out to the side and we'll be doing that kind of thing. So when you are getting ready for this class, make sure you've got some space around you. So I'm just stepping out to the side here. Now, one of the things that I have to remember to do when I'm doing the chair class is to tell you everything as well as showing you everything. Because the chair based class is also really good for people who have um, a vision impairment or who are blind. And yes, I've taught plenty of people who are blind before. Um, and so it's quite, you know, it's quite nice because I love this class because I have taught so many people of different abilities. And it's just a great feeling when somebody says to me, can I do this class? Can I do? And I say, yes, you are included. This class is for you. This class is for everyone. And the Zumba Gold Chair class is, <laughs> is kind of my favorite because it's so inclusive. And I've been able to work with the most amazing people because of this class. So you are welcome and you are included. Okay. So uh, here we go. In the chair, we're doing all this. So I might be saying something to you, you know, step out to the side. I might say step out on the right. We might say just step out on the side and then step out on the other side, okay? Because it doesn't matter if you go left or you go right, okay? Step one side, step the other side. Step one side, step the other side. That's fine. I might just say march it out, march it out. And hopefully you'll be able to follow that quite nice and easy, okay? If you've got any problems or questions, please feel free to email me and call me. It sounds like I'm finishing. I'm not, I haven't even started yet, don't worry. <laughs> so um, the other thing I was gonna say, okay, for some of you, you're gonna be dealing with this class with um, what we call dysphagia, uh, which I'm pretty sure is, so when one half of the body doesn't work the same as the other. It's very common in people who've had strokes, um, uh, or you might have just, you know, I had to teach like this before when I broke my shoulder. So a couple of points about that. Uh, again, if I say step out to the side and then step out on the other side, and you can't step out on the other side, you have a choice. What we generally recommend is that you just do your best with the side that's having difficulty. Okay, so if you've had a stroke and you find moving your right hand side is quite easy, great, do that right hand side. When it comes to your left hand side, just do the best you can on that side. Don't worry if it's different. Don't worry if it's not the same. Don't worry about anything. Just do your best on that side. Relax and let go. And what people normally find is that they can actually do better than they thought they could because you've got the added bonus of the music. And the music is really powerful and important. And the way that we work with it in this class is so important because we repeat the same moves to the same pieces of music. 
So what that means is that your kind of your brain has a little extra push because it says, okay, I remember that when we do this, when I hear this piece of music, I'm going to do this. So what's really great about this is your reaction times often get better. So if you are if you have problems with coordination, Zumba is great to give you a little extra push to improve that coordination. Uh, if you have I, obviously there's a whole load of reasons why one side of your body might not work exactly the same as the other. None of us are, none of us are perfectly symmetrical, <laughs> and we all have like stronger and weaker things. One of the reasons we try and work equally on both sides is because when we have a weaker side, and I have a weaker side, right hand uh, side hip, what happens is the other side tries to compensate. So most of us will have one side, maybe one arm, one leg, or near hip, that does too much work. But this one overworks, it does too much work. And then what happens is this side <laughs> gets injured. And so then I get end up with two dodgy sides. So we try to keep it even because what that means is that the weaker side has to work the same as what we think of as our stronger side. And that's really gonna help, especially with things like balance as well. And what we often do in life, in day-to-day -day life, is we start to compensate. So if you're right-handed, you tend to pick up with your right hand. And what that means is the right hand keeps being stronger and stronger and stronger. And likewise, you know, if you have an injury to the right arm, uh, which I had, I broke the shoulder, then we have to do everything with the left, the left arm. And suddenly that left arm is getting really, really tired because it's overworking. So again, use your, use your brain, use your intelligence to not overwork the part of your body that's already been overworked. A special tip that I'd give you is if you have a say an acute injury, so it's something that's kind of recent, um, and so maybe, you know, like a chip in the shoulder uh, or a strained wrist or something like that. Even though you're not using it in this class, be careful about it because sometimes all the other movement can actually jostle it and make it sore. So be kind, <laughs> be kind to any injuries that you might have and be aware of them and try not to strain those things any further. Okay, that makes sense? Good. Okay, so let's just get back to the chair. So this one is a nice easy one, very, very quite, very good, very quite good. <laughs> and just really this, this little bit that I have to watch out for. Um, now, officially, we would say this is the perfect chair to work out in, okay? Because it's harder to slump. I still slumped a bit, but it's harder to slump. And it doesn't have any armrests. So I don't have to worry about hitting my arms on the armrests. So it's kind of nice and easy. Having said that, a lot of people prefer to sit and work out in a different kind of chair. Or you might not have a chair like this. So I'm just going to talk about a couple of different types of chairs. What are the benefits? What are the problems with those things? And I'm also going to talk about wheelchairs as well. Okay. So uh, a lot of people like to have an armrest because either that's the chair they're comfortable in or because they need those armrests to get up out of the chair at the end. So when, you, when you're going up to make a cup of tea afterwards, so I had a picky um, When you're pushing up to get out of the chair to go make a cup of tea or you know, whatever you do afterwards, uh, you want your armrest. And that's fine if that's your choice. But just be very, very careful if you have an armrest on your chair that you don't hit your elbows you know, or your side as we're going from side to side. Most important is you have a strong chair, okay? So if you've got a kitchen chair that you have to keep replacing the legs on because they keep falling off, don't use that chair. Please don't use that chair, okay? In that case, what we want is, as long as you've got a firm support, all right, you want to be really supported, you want to make sure that you've got no danger of tripping, because we're going to do things like this. We're going to lean from side to side, because it's gonna help with your balance, it's gonna help work out your abs, it's gonna be really good for you. But if you lean from side to side, you've got to be very careful that suddenly the chair isn't gonna go out from under you, okay? Please don't try and do this in an office wheelie chair. You know, one of those chairs with the wheels and the, the thing? I, I, I've not tried it, but I'm pretty sure that's kind of dangerous. I'm pretty sure that I would not, I would not recommend that as a safe activity, okay? <laughs> See, sometimes I don't know because I've not tried it. 
And I've sat in a few different chairs that I've got here and I've been surprised by some of them. But let's look at those quickly. Okay, so we've got the kitchen chair. I'm quite happy with that. That was a good one to work out with, right? Okay. So, but if you have a different chair, if you want an armrest, you might work out with something more like this. More or less. Okay. I'm actually going to turn this to the side so you can see. I feel like I'm selling home furniture, but I'm not. So, <laughs> this is more like a, you know, your rocking chair, your armchair. It's quite comfortable. I can watch TV quite a long time in this. Yeah, not the best for, for a workout, but if it's what you've got and it's or it's where you feel safe, let's do it. So this chair has armrests. They're hard armrests, so I've got to be really careful that I don't whack my hands or my elbows or anything like that. You've got to make so make so sure we're being careful right now. If you're worried about that, what you can also do is you could put a cushion over the armrest or a towel, you know, a thick towel or something like that, even a duvet, you know, a pillow, something like that, to make sure that it's soft and you're not going to hit your elbows on the chair. Okay? The worst thing about this chair, <laughs> see, I'm going to move that so you can see. The worst thing about this chair, of course, is if I'm trying to work out in this chair, and also it's very difficult, if I just step out to the side of this chair, it's really hard because I've got like this long cushion. So I probably have to kind of go to the edge. And uh, again, it just doesn't feel right. Um, I would not recommend it. But the worst part is, look at me. If I sit up and work out, that's great. And I can move to the side and do that kind of thing. But if I relax and I'm slouched, I'm basically lying down in the chair, you know, just slouching. So, um, <laughs> I mean, it's comfortable watching TV and that kind of thing, but it's probably not very good for my back. And also, I've kind of got this headrest up here. So that's going to, I don't know how I, I wouldn't teach in this. I find it very difficult. But you know, like I said before, sometimes just watching the class can be beneficial. So if you're kind of at the point where you just want to watch or maybe just kind of listen to the music and go with it, you know, of course you can do it something like this. Because you're really more in a watching mode than a doing mode. Okay? Don't hold yourself back if you don't have all the right equipment right now. As long as you feel safe um, and just be very careful of any injury. So, for example, you know, we could really kick out and kick on something. So, be very, very careful of your space, watch out for your space. And also be careful of your room in terms of temperature. Check the temperature. Is it too hot? Is it too cold? What you're wearing? Is it loose? Is it allowing you to move? Um, and, and just, you know, basics like that, really, just basics like that. Uh, also, we talk about the volume. So if for this class, I'm going to have a lower volume of music and, uh, and then so you can hear me talk, okay, so I can explain the moves. Uh, if you want to, you can turn up the volume at your end, either on your computer or your TV um, or if you have speakers attached. So if you need a bit of help with that, maybe ask a friend um, if you've got somebody who's with you uh, to have a look at that or ask somebody about that before the class so that you feel comfortable and you're fully set up, fully set up for the class. Okay? So let's just look at a couple more chairs. Um, actually, before we do that, I just want to go over being in a wheelchair. So if you are going to do this class in a wheelchair, and you can, and uh, I'm trying to remember now, I had a lot of participants, some of you might be those participants, who used to come in motorized wheelchairs, but I think that almost all of those people did the class in a chair. I can't remember if they actually did them in the motorized wheelchair. But I've definitely done classes where people have been in wheelchairs. So your wheelchair, and sometimes you'll have um, an armrest that you can take away, and sometimes you might not. So think carefully about whether you want to remove those armrests. Uh, the good thing about most wheelchairs is their armrests are padded, you know, so you've kind of got a little bit of safety there. But just think about it, be aware of it, or whether it's something you want to. Now, officially, we usually say that if you've got a footrest on your wheelchair, that you remove those or you fold them up when you're going to do a class. And that's how most people would do um, a single goal chair class. Having said that, I have got friends who do not like to do that. And uh, some of those people are actually Zumba instructors. So they teach from a wheelchair regularly. And they say, <laughs> my friend says, 
leave my foot supports alone. I like them and I like working out of them. And uh, it's funny actually, because as we said before at the very beginning, you might want to put some books underneath your feet so you get that kind of contact. For somebody who's in a wheelchair, they might like to have, or if you, if you were in a wheelchair, you might like to have that support so that you can really feel what you're doing with your feet and work like that. But whatever you do, just be aware, just be careful. Just, you know, be very, have attention. Have attention and awareness on what you're doing and how it is. Okay, so that's that chair, that's that chair. So we're just gonna look at a couple more chairs. Da -da -da -da. I'll tell you what, I can get a really good job as a furniture removal person after this. All right, so this is probably the worst chair. Let's try this, okay? So with this one, I don't like it. Okay, can you imagine trying to do a class in this? Okay, well, for a start, you can't see me uh, because my head's over the top. <laughs> it's a very high stool that I'm sitting on. And uh, can you imagine if I go from one side to the other, there's a very good chance I'm going to fall off because I really hurt myself. So, some of you might have kitchen stools, things like that, that you're very comfortable sitting and eating on. Don't, please don't try and do a class on this. Okay, even if you feel comfortable on it to sit and eat, it's a very different thing when we're working out and we're exercising. So I would say this is very unsafe and I would say, please don't do it. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things. Uh, I would tell you, I just saw on the news today that there's been a huge spike during the coronavirus crisis in uh, injuries for DIY. Because obviously people are like, oh, I'm home, I'm, you know, I'm gonna go and build something. And uh, I mean, I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't laugh. It's a really, um, it, it, it's it's crazy. It's crazy, and we shouldn't be, we should not be putting ourselves in any kind of risk right now. We don't need to do that. Okay, we don't need to go and um, start building something. Okay, uh, it's a bad idea. So, uh, and similarly, in fit with fitness, the whole point about fitness is to keep you safe and to keep you supported and doing a little bit of exercise to keep your lungs working and everything going well. So the last thing we need to do is fall off a stool and uh, give yourself an injury. That is not a good idea. Now this one, I like to sit on this when I'm talking to people on Zoom, uh, which is the, the video, because usually I will come up and sit on this right up close to the monitor once we finish the class. Um, but nobody ever sees what I'm actually sitting on. <laughs> and this is actually the footstool for the big arm easy chair. Now, you know, I would say don't do this on a stool, don't do a class on a stool, but actually, this isn't half bad. Um, it's quite nice and wide. I've got a lot of space. It's making my feet really touch the ground and connect in a good way. It's probably a little bit short for me. I, and I probably would feel it here afterwards. I wouldn't be so keen on that. Um, but it's not too bad, is it? It's not too bad. So it's kind of worth thinking is if you've got something like this, like a low stool that's comfortable and it's got a wide seat and it's very sturdy. I mean, that's not just going to wobble and fall over. So if I say don't do it on a stool, you can see what I mean. There's a big difference between the high kitchen stool and something low like this, like a foot stool, what we might call, or we might call a foot rest. And, uh, <laughs> So this is what I was talking about um, as well. So I've got a couch here and the corner of it is very much like, again, it's like a footstool. So um, I, could, I could potentially do the workout here and it would mean I've got that freedom and the space and everything's padded. The only thing is it would make it kind of difficult if I was trying to move and it kind of, I kind of sink into it a little bit. But it's, you know, it's pretty much okay. And so if you've got a foot rest or something like that, a lot of people have those big square Footrest, you know, that might not be a bad thing to sit on to do this class. So just use your, use your sensibleness and uh, find the right thing for you. And I'm just going to show you one more, <laughs> which is the chair that everybody always goes, ooh, goes with the table and it's really nice, okay? This is the table, this is the, the chair. Ooh, it's really nice, okay, isn't it? A really fast, fast chair. And if I sit down on this chair, I basically fall off. I fall right off. 
So <laughs> please don't, please don't try this at home. Please don't try to work out on a chair that's that unstable, no matter how pretty it looks. Please don't. We don't need it right now, okay? So stay safe. I hope you come and join me. Remember, even if you just want to watch it and enjoy the music, that's okay. That's fine, okay? And whatever you do, just keep dancing. Even if you put the music on, just have a little dance in your chair. If you want to watch like Strictly or old dance movies, it will all keep you going and keep you safe and keep you just feeling good. You know, we want to make you sure you're happy as well. And you get that joie de vivre. And uh, just dance. Okay, see you soon and take care.